my dears, I have prepared some tips for those who are about to paint a portrait, especially in software mimicking real media, like Rebel 5. First, prepare a reference. Here's a photo of my friend Annie, a traveler, blogger and a very nice person. I saw in some art books that a better option is to start with a background in a neutral color. The perception of colors is better. And you know, the white background of our screens makes our eyes tired. Therefore, I change the color of the canvas to cappuccino. It is very helpful to create a quick base sketch. Grab a soft digital pencil. Remember about the body proportions. Draw lines that connect eyes on the same level, taking into account the perspective. Mark the direction of the head. When the first sketch was ready, I decreased its opacity, added a layer above and then started another sketch. If you need more sketches, go ahead. I often left all the layers with sketches visible, but the last one is the most pronounced. The eyes are the mirror of the soul. I usually start with drawing eyes, because it motivates me more to finish the painting of a character. You can pick up colors from the reference photo, like I did. Don't hesitate to experiment. My favorite technique is to paint smooth transitions, like shadows on the nose, with a Filbert watercolor brush and distinct shapes, like mouth lips, with a liner brush. Develop your painting from general to specific, even if it doesn't look satisfying at the beginning. Mark shapes with contour lines, if you want to. Use specific brushes like a mop one with high water content, in my case, to achieve original effects. In Rebel software, it's good to wait for a while after a paint application, because the watercolors need time to spread over the canvas. Desire to add a specific, delicate color filter. Contrasting colors are not always the best option. However, some artists add them intentionally. Light is scattered and colors are usually mixed in real life. Annie has got ginger blonde hair, so I decided to shift the color balance and add more red mid-tones. The brightness was also lowered. Then I changed the angle of my painting, just to make it more dynamic and attractive. Then I repeated my play with color balance. But this time I also shifted the shadows to the blue side. The delicate line art was added with a pencil. One trick that I like most is to add a darker, more pronounced color at the tips of the fingers. This makes an attractive gradient. To boost the cuteness, long eyelashes were added with a few pencil strokes. My portrait is not a copy version of the photo, it's strongly stylized. I've kept some characteristic features of Annie's appearance like hairdress, eyebrows, chin and nose shape. Some non-natural floral details were added, which pronounced the artistic individual interpretation of the character. It is not desired to leave the corners standing out, so the composition was changed and the painting resized. Ok, we have it, but wait, it's not the final version! Being inspired by Instagram posts of artists, I made up my mind and provided some changes. I increased the space around the character and reduced some of the details. That gave my painting a calm mood. The triangle part of the cloth at the bottom is a fine finish of the character.
The tilt was set to down. Then I added some paint with high water content in chosen places and waited. Repeated and waited. And again and again. There was a gradient added in the background. Some area around the rows was darkened, which helped the viewers to focus their eyesight on the meaningful part of the painting. Here it is! Which version do you like more? Give your opinion in the comments!